Hi, my name is Liz and I work with CardioVisual. We are here starting this new series and collaborating with Sam and I'll let her introduce herself. Hi, my name is Sam. I'm the CEO of Don't Miss a Beat. It's a cardiovascular education company. I've been in RCIS for about seven years now. I went through an AS and CBT program and then a cardiopulmonary sciences bachelor's and eventually an MBA program. Now I am a full-time educator in a CBT program and I run my business and collaborate with people like CardioVisual. All right, everybody. We are starting our new series with Cath Lab and Coffee. We are just going to talk about all things cath lab. So first of all, what in the world is a cath lab? Um, in general, cath lab's kind of, to me, like the hidden gem of the hospital. A lot of people go there or drop patients off there, but they don't actually know what they do. Um, the way it sounds, it sounds like we only do cardiac procedures. But that's not true. So we do a little bit of everything. We do arms and legs, so peripheral vasculature. Some of them also do neuro, so they do some carotids and cerebrals. Some do renals, which are the kidneys. Um, some do EP as a little integration. That's a whole other talk. <laughs> We're mainly going to talk about the cardiac side of things. But just understand, like, the cath lab is literally an umbrella of everything that the rest of the hospital really doesn't do ends up in the cath lab. So, um as we talk, that's why it's so complicated, because we have a, a big mix of people and backgrounds, which is amazing, uh, but also confusing for some people. So that's that's why we're here today. Yep. And we do have a visual of just kind of what a cath lab looks like. So if you want to explain a little bit about what we're seeing in these images right here. Of course. So I hope your top left is my top left. So my top left, this is actually in my classroom. So this is not a real person um, that we are going into. This is a, a animated simulated person, but that is me scrubbed in on the right hand side. And then my students scrubbed in with me on the left hand side. So this is kind of what we do is not, it, we don't call it surgery because it's percutaneous. It's under the skin. We go through the groin or the wrist. So in this case, we're going through the groin. There are is still blood and some, a lot of invasive components. Um, but essentially we are putting equipment inside and out of the artery kind of over and over again um, with larger pieces of equipment, smaller pieces of equipment. We can kind of get everywhere because everything in your body is connected, right? So the artery that I get in in your wrist can go down to your toe, can go inside of your heart, up to your brain. Um, so it's really amazing what we're able to do. Um, what they are doing in that picture is inflating a small balloon that goes into the coronary artery as if someone was having a heart attack. On the bottom picture, this is actually a screenshot from a live case that I watched online. So there's a lot more people in the room. There tend to be a lot more people in the room with the cases that you see online. But what you're actually looking at is a female interventional cardiologist on the right hand side. And then in between them is um, another operating physician who is assisting her. And then in the little black and white hat, that is actually a scrub tech, which who can have many different backgrounds that we'll talk about but assisting the physician in this procedure. And that's really the role that I've been trained in for the last seven years um, and that most of the people that you meet are going to be doing. And then the role that you can do in the lab, um, a lot of nurses do this role is the circulator or like the sedating nurse. You push sedation and medications, emergency meds, um, those three people on the back wall, not all of them are nurses. Some of them are reps in the room that represent the equipment that we're using. Um, sometimes you see one person, sometimes two, depending how complex the case is. But what, what I, really I want, want you to see is the lab is a very different environment. There's a huge team dynamic component that a lot of people don't know about. Even if you've been a nurse for 15 years on the floor, sometimes you're a little siloed and rounding and taking care of a specific patient. You might have one person that can come and help you. But in the lab, your, your knowledge is really relied upon. You speak up in cases. We collaborate on things together to make decisions that's best for the patient. Um, it's just so specialized that everybody kind of has a piece, a key piece of information that we need to make the case and the patient treatment best as possible. So you really have to be comfortable working in that team environment and speaking up and collaborating with people of different backgrounds. And then on the right hand side, um, a very big important part of what we do is we work in radiation. So this is a fluoroscopy system. There is a C arm. If you see on the left hand side, it kind of looks like a C that sits at the head of the patient and kind of below them. And it moves around the whole case. We take moving images. It's not like when you go to get a chest x-ray, this thing is kind of moving around you. And that's how we see 
2D images of a 3D object, right? Your heart is a 3D object. So we kind of have to take pictures all the way around you. But for us, it's important because we are exposed to that radiation a little more so than other professions. And it's something, you know, people might not know a lot about. Oh, awesome. All right. So we were just going to talk a little bit about the different uh, you talked about team members in the lab, and uh, we talked a little bit about in that image who's who, but let's talk about who usually gets hired in the cath lab and a little bit more about that team dynamic. Yes, yeah, so I get people who ask me, how do I work in the cath lab? There's a lot of avenues. <laughs> it really <laughs> depends on your background. And yep. in a lot of places, the it, it really just depends on your willingness to learn. Right. I mean, some of it, like I was lucky enough that I got to go to school for this. This is what I'm trained in. I'm an RCIS. I'm on the far right hand side there, a registered cardiovascular and basis specialist. But a lot of people learn what we call OJT on the job trained, i.e. no one ever taught you how to do this. And you're learning on your first day with a real patient. And it seems scary and it can be. But again, we're a, we're a team environment. Everyone should be sharing their knowledge with each other. So Liz, for example, is a nurse. And yet she found her way to the lab. She doesn't do floor nursing. Then you have, well, I'm not going in order. The first two, you can <laughs> see a respiratory therapist or a radiologic technologist and still find your way into the procedural area of the lab. So I really rely on the diversity of backgrounds that we have in the lab, because if I have a patient that needs to be intubated, I'm not going to be the first one to raise my hand. If something happens with the floor system or we need to troubleshoot something with x-ray, I'm not going to be the first one to raise my hand. If a patient is coding and I need someone to administer the emergency meds and really manage those complex strips, I'm not going to be the first one to raise my hand. Could I? Sure. Am I trained in it? Yes. Are there other people who specialize in that? Absolutely. And that's really what's interesting if you've ever had the privilege to see a code situation or even, you know, videos online where we talk about delegating those tasks. The cath lab is really interesting where everyone just kind of knows what they do. Like, this is what I'm really good at, so I'm going to go do that. You're really good at this, so go do this. And everyone kind of has their their role and their specialty, but we all come together for the same outcome. Absolutely. And it does vary state by state as well. So some states allow nurses to scrub and some don't. Some hospitals do and some hospitals don't. So there's a lot of variability and interchangeability with these roles as well. So it just kind of depends on what your hospital system allows and what states allow as well under your scope of practice. Correct. And that's important to note, too, is the ones that we put up here are just the common ones that... Mm -hmm we hear of, but I have seen people who are paramedics be cross-trained into the lab. I've seen surgical techs that typically work in the OR come and cross-train into the lab. You'll realize states and hospitals kind of use the resources that they have around them. And especially during COVID when we had issues hiring people in hospitals, people had to get a little more creative and provides a little bit of better educational resources and orientation to kind of help them learn what they didn't go to school to learn and you have someone's you know, life in your hands. So again, beautiful teamwork environment, but you kind of have to be able to work with people of different backgrounds and appreciate their specialties and what they're trained to do. Right, absolutely. And th then there's a difference between interventional cardiologists and diagnostic cardiologists. And I know that gets really confusing, not only for patients, but for staff as well. So uh, talk a little bit about the difference between a diagnostic and an interventional cardiologist. In the layman's terms version will say a diagnostic procedure or a diagnostic cardiologist diagnosis so i can tell you what problems you have we can interrogate those some of those problems a little bit with imaging which you see on the left hand side this is an angiogram so when we're putting that plastic tube through your femoral artery going up to your heart we inject some contrast and we're able to visualize those arteries on top of your heart and kind of see them moving and contracting. So a diagnostic physician can do that. They do a lot of non-invasive imaging. So if you go to get your echo, or your 12 lead interpreted, they're typically the ones doing those procedures, cardioversions, TEEs, all of those things. Um, and then you have the interventional side. So sometimes out of, as a patient, you're in that position where the person who's fixing the problem isn't the same person who diagnosed the problem for you. Again, team environment, we all have specialties that we're good at. An interventionalist just specializes in fixing the problem, whether that's drills, lasers, balloons, stents, all of those things to kind of clean out all of that gunk. The one here on the right-hand side is a stent. So we go in and put a little wire down your coronary. We inflate a balloon to open it up. 
we put in a stent, this little metal mesh to keep it open, and then we take everything out and that's how we fix it, one of the ways in which we fix it. So that's really what an, an interventionalist for cardiology does. And they do work in tandem with each other because obviously the interventionalist will be taking over that patient, but they have to understand from the diagnostic physician what all is going on with you, cardiac wise, renal wise, vascular wise, to really put together the best plan. So they work in tandem, they just have different things that they specialize in. And you want the person who specializes in that thing to do that for you. Right. That's kind of my, my overview of really the differences between them. Awesome. Um, and then let's just talk about what the safety equipment looks like in the cath lab and why are everybody wearing these vests? Yeah, so if you look at the, the picture that we put before, the three people standing on the back wall, everyone in that room has these on, but when we're scrubbed in, we have these great big OR blue gowns over us, so you don't get to appreciate that and see it. A lot of them have these cool patterns on it, and the main reason is that if someone's wearing your lead, you know. But this one, for instance, you see there's kind of something, this is a woman, something around her neck. She has a top piece on the jacket underneath because it's cold in there and a bottom piece that's like a skirt. So this is lead and it protects you, well, really reduces your exposure to the radiation that we use. And lead is heavy. So a lot of part of the cath lab is really taking care of your body as well. Um, unfortunately, we do get a lot of ortho related issues, back issues from carrying around this lead all the time. So personal fitness and personal health is equally as important, but we are in this every day, all day. So really, optimizing your protection is super important for working in this field, especially if it's something that you're doing five, 10, 15 years of your life. And we spend 80% of our life or more at work. Yep. Wearing these types of things is really important to protect you. So, you know, patients are in there for an hour or two, sometimes a little less. Our exposure over time is compounded because this is what we do for our lifestyle. So you will see people walking around you wearing these some have flames on them, <laughs> these really cool design things yep. um, that just protect us for our job and reduce our, our risks of having some radiation related applications. And okay. I forgot to mention that we also we usually wear the funny looking hats as well. What are those called? Yes. Well, I call them bouffants. I don't yes. know what you call them. Okay. I call them bouffants. I don't know if that's a chef term. It might be a lot of my students are chefs. It must be. like, I used to wear this when I worked in the kitchen. Um, yeah. But yeah, and we wear some with cool designs and cool colors. I met some with like glow in the dark ones. Nice. Um, we have to cover our hair. It is an invasive procedure. So, you know, you don't want someone's hair floating around the lab. So we do cover all that up. And again, we have to wear it every day, all the time. So it might as well look kind of interesting and maybe be a topic for conversation. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> All right, so let's uh, let's just talk about in general, why would anybody want to join a cath lab? You know, that's a great question. And what's funny is a lot of people don't know why. <laughs> they think what we do is cool. They came and dropped off a patient and we're like, wow, like you get to have that immediate result, mm -hmm. right? And I, I can completely understand. I'm really not the bedside type of person. I don't want to hand off a patient with a problem to someone else to fix. I want to be the person to help contribute to fixing it. And the, the beauty of the cath lab is we see the best and the worst of things, right? So we are the end stop where hopefully we can help that person, but there is a portion of patients that we can't help. And right. it's both the, the best thing that we can do and also maybe the worst thing that you'll experience in healthcare. So it does take a, a special kind of person to be able to handle both sides of that spectrum. And again, it's a, a team. So everyone's experiencing it with you. You're not suffering alone or seeing these types of things alone. And we talk to each other and kind of help out each other mentally and emotionally more so than maybe academically sometimes. Um, Absolutely. But you do get that immediate gratification. A lot of people like that. A lot of people like the adrenaline rush of the emergency. Mm -hmm. I want to code my patient. I want to do CPR. I want to contribute to bringing them back to life, right? Um, being able to handle both sides of that is important. The other side of that is we're also all very straightforward people. <laughs> we're not nice. Nice. 
<laughs> it takes a personality sometimes. <laughs> yes, because at the, at the end of the day, someone's life is in your hands. And you yeah. have to be able to handle constructive criticism. Yep. And it's not personal. You know, yeah. I care about my patient. So, yes, I am going to call you out on things with love, you know, but yep. I might not ask you, can you please go get this? I'm going to say, go get this and go get it now and bring it back. And it's not, it's me advocating for the patient and for the urgency of things. But there's some people who don't want that. And they right. want a slow, cool, chill environment where nothing changes. I have my routine. Nothing in the cath lab is typically routine. If there's a plan, we're changing it. It's we're not going with the plan. Um, so, you know, if, if you constantly want to be challenged and forever learning, because our technology advances by the day, it seems like now, it's a great field for you. But I totally respect and understand that people are like, no, I want, I want to know what I'm walking into every day when I go to work. No, cath lab's not for you. But if you want some fun and some challenging things and really challenge yourself academically and emotionally a little bit, the cath lab could be mm -hmm. great. We do, we do amazing work that I feel like sometimes is, I mean, I am educated in it, but sometimes I'm just like, do I really have the privilege to do this type of thing for people? You know, if, and I've seen open heart surgery before and all of that is right in front of you. And I feel like we get that same gratification. Absolutely. Um, what advice would you give to somebody who is just learning or beginning their cath lab journey? Get some books, <laughs> go back, open some resources. YouTube is also your friend. Um, you are not going to know everything. And a lot of people come into the cath lab as a second career and you are used to being that go-to person yep. in the unit. You're used to being, you know, the lead technologist, the lead charge nurse, and now you're walking in at the bottom of the totem pole and you feel like you don't know what's going on. Everyone's moving around you like they know what they're supposed to be doing. And you're like, okay, okay we all started that way. Nobody's, yep. as I always say, nobody's born knowing how to do all of this stuff in the cath lab. You'll find people with 25 years of experience. A new piece of equipment comes in. They don't know how to do it. You mm -hmm. have to be able to learn on the fly and be okay with that and know that the people around you are going to get you there. That's what our device reps are for, to really give you all of that education. But you have to want to learn and admit what you don't know and be open to different ways of learning and different ways of teaching. And hopefully one day the lightning, the light bulb kind of clicks for you, but you can't be too hard on yourself. You know, give yourself some grace, get some good resources, find a person who'll be in your corner where you can be like, I'm completely overwhelmed. I don't know what I'm doing. And they'll be like, it's okay. I felt that way a year ago too. <laughs> give it time right. um, and have a good, you know, a good support system. And I think a lot of people don't realize how long of an orientation uh, process it can be for cath lab on the floor. You might only be in orientation for maybe four to six weeks, mm -hmm. maybe a couple months, depending on your skill levels. But cath lab is a different ball game and it's hard to kind of go back to ground zero and build yep. your skills back up. So knowing yep. that that takes time. And you're going to, on paper, you'll come off orientation within a month or two, <laughs> but mentally you're going to feel like you're on orientation for much longer than that. Correct. And Absolutely. that's okay. I've been doing this for seven years and there's still so much I don't know and mm -hmm. so much I've learned and new technologies that come out. And I'm like, oh my gosh, that completely just uprooted everything that I thought I ever knew <laughs> about this device. And that's the beauty of, of what we do is that you, you get that privilege to be on the forefront of technology, but it's going to come with an overhaul of, of learning. Mm -hmm. Yep. A lifetime learning. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so we are going to be starting these episodes and our next one is going to focus more about the first couple weeks in cath lab and what to expect and follow us along. We have um, different platforms that we have and Samantha, you're on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok. You also have I'm a working website on everywhere. <laughs> I'm working on YouTube. <laughs> Yeah, that's great. And then CardioVisual, uh, we're in a lot of places too. You can follow us along on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, and we also have a CardioVisual website. So follow us along and join in on our discussions. And do you have anything else to add for today? No, more if you have specific things that you're struggling with or want to address, you can DM either of us if you want it to be anonymous and not do a comment on here, that's fine. We, we will take suggestions. This is made for you. So please tell us what you want to know or what questions you have. Thank you Absolutely. for having me, Liz. I appreciate it. 
Absolutely. We're trying to build a community of support and mentorship. So thank you so much, Samantha, Sam, for being on today. And I look forward to our next one. Me too.